Hi, this is Dave and welcome to the weekly market recap closing out the week for Friday, August the 30th, 2013 and we are closing out uh, the summer. Uh, happy, Labor, happy, happy Labor Day weekend. Recording this video on uh, Sunday, September the 1st and um, let's just, uh, I took Friday off and I did not trade on Friday so let's just take a look at the markets and see uh, what transpired now the reason why I took Friday off aside from the fact that you know I like an excuse to take a four-day weekend and spend some time um, you know f with my family uh, and all that good stuff is that we're really really just bouncing around this 14,800 level let me just grab the pen here we're just bouncing around this key 14,800 level and I think we really need to we need to see some resolve around this level. This is an area where you know people really get chopped up, and this area, um, this area has been a real, uh, you know, sort of tug of war where you've got, you know, here's the middle, and you've got people on this side pulling this way. You've got the bulls pushing higher. You've got the bears pushing lower, and this area is is turned out to be a real area of contention. We knew that this was a major support level going back. Um, because we've you know we've tested it a number of times we've had a lot of volume and a lot of activity around this level and this this area has proved out to just be a a real area of contention so we you know we push through the level um, we push back up above the level and we've just been playing around that level for uh, three or four days now so you know stepping back and um, you know lightening up and just sort of seeing how the market will resolve itself around this level I think has been um, has made sense so let's just take a look at um, you know where we close the day off so if I go over to you know I'll just illustrate this point this is a one minute chart of the of the same market of the Dow futures and you can see although it looks very messy um, you can see here 14,800 you know there's a couple of major there's a couple of zones but you've got 14,810 you've got um, 14,800 and then below that you know you've got 14 uh, uh, 7 760 to 780 so there's a, it's a whole zone in here it's not just a specific level it's more of a zone so look at all the activity on Friday that we spent around this level and you can see here it looked like we were gonna let go and then look at the volume coming in just after 3 o'clock at the close on Friday we rip back up to the high side um, and you know a whole day of activity on Friday only to you know retest these lows around seven fourteen thousand seven hundred and forty five again we put in a sort of double bottom there on the one minute chart and look at where we closed we closed right uh, right at fourteen thousand eight hundred so um, you know when you when you look at when you look at that um, it just goes to show you that there's a tug of war taking place there and there's been no real clear winner you know we don't we don't really know what's gonna happen going into next week in fact um, this is probably I'm gonna run through a number of scenarios but I'm pro I probably have the least amount of conviction on either side of this market that I've had in a, in a very long time so these are let's run through the scenarios the one scenario is that um, you've got a minor downtrend line going here and if we break that minor downtrend line, then we have a shot, as we said last week, of maybe coming into, you know, 15,100 to 15,200 ish back into this higher trend line. So that's, you know, that's one scenario there that could play out. The, uh, that's the bullish scenario. The bearish scenario is that we're going to fail this level and we're just going to push down and retest some of these lows going back. So some of those lows come in around um, 14,480 let's call it 14,500 so we really need to see how we're going to resolve ourselves around 14,800 now having said that um, I don't like the short side I mean if we come back down hard through let's say 14,000 uh, I think it's 760 if I'm not mistaken this this lower level of the zone 14,760 then I'd be looking for a test of this lower level but having said that um, I don't you know if I'm looking to take a short I don't really like where momentum is in this equation and you know we're putting in some sort of positive divergences for the momentum on the slow stochastic even though the MACD is really weak this sh this pen should actually be red um, but um, having said that um, I don't I don't really like where momentum is so I would be looking for 
essentially, um, you know, the unexpected where we're, we're going to sort of hold this level, push through and push up into some higher levels. You know, 15,000 has been a key resistance level here. It's been containing the price action. Um, 14,800 has been holding the price action. So you've really got, you've really got this zone and then you have, um, you know, the potential to break out of this 200 point zone and either push to the high side or push to the low side. So I don't want to belabor this. I think that, you know, on the Labor Day weekend, no pun intended, I don't want to belabor it. Uh, but, you know, in order to really get something going, we really need guidance outside of that range. And having said that, I don't like the short side, even though I, you know, I believe it's it's a real possibility that we could go down and test these lower levels. In fact, this is starting to look like uh, a head and shoulders pattern, you know, from a macro standpoint, and that could mean, you know, that we do this and we do that. So, um, you know, I'm open to the possibility, but the only reason why I don't like it is because of where momentum is. Now, having said that, when you start trending in a market, momentum can stay buried to the high side or the low side uh, for extended periods of time, you know, like it did here. So, I mean, any anything is essentially possible here. So, having said that, um, let's, I, I'm going to treat this entire zone as a dead zone between 15,000 or 14,800. Actually, let me, um, let me like type this properly. So between, let's call it 14,760, cause that's where we've been testing on the low side to about uh, 15,000 ish. Let's say 1510, just to give it a few points on the upside. I'm going to treat this as a dead zone for swing trading okay it is a dead zone for swing trading okay that went off the screen but essentially I don't like this entire area I don't like this entire area for swing trading and I'm gonna let this market resolve itself either it's gonna hold that level uh, or that zone to the low side and push off or it's gonna fail that zone so we're right where the rubber meets the road we closed right at that inflection point at 14,800 and we need some clear direction. So I hope that makes sense. I think I've uh, probably overkilled the point. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to step back and watch what happens here. Let's take a look at the S&P. So the S&P futures, um, you know, they came down to this 50% retracement. You've got the same sort of scenario here. The Dow looks a little bit weaker, but we're holding this 15,000 uh, or I'm sorry, this 1,630-ish level. I think we closed at 1,631.25. And uh, that has been, you know, 1,620, I'd say 1,626 to 1,630-ish has been a pretty key level. And we've just kind of closed that, that line in the sand there. And let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. So very indecisive close this weekend, or this week rather. Um, NASDAQ is, you know, just holding the bottom end of that range as well not much to talk about there let's take a look at the IWM which tracks the um, the Russell so if you look at that I mean we closed right at a line in the sand too we had a hundred dollars uh, a hundred even on the IWM as a clear you know support level that is a clear line in the sand kind of level and look at where we closed right above that at 138 cents so really indecisive market uh, let's take a look at some uh, you know some key stocks let's take a look at Apple Apple still holding this minor uptrend line uh, it came off of its highs just over 500 um, but it's still in an uptrend and you've got you know its key level there its breakout point around 471 ish um, so if we come back down and test 471 you really want to see if it's going to hold that level and hold support I want to take a look at Google this is um, a stock that one of the members from our extended community um, you know sent me a note about and um, uh, was talking about liking it to the short side so I want to just you know for just for analysis uh, sake just have a look at this market uh, at this instrument and see you know what's going on here um, and just provide some um, you know just some analysis just for educational purposes if nothing else so what I see here when I'm taking a look at Apple is you've got this sort of complex topping pattern you've got a couple of you know triangle patterns that formed at different levels I think this is really the key level um, here we're at a key support level of long-term trend line support we're at a um, you know a triangle breakdown level so you've got a couple levels coming together here around eight hundred and sixty dollars so if you look at um, you know we held this low here 
we popped up and we came back down through 860 so I think this would be you know this level makes uh, makes sense you know you could sell me on this you know for a level to short um, having said that I think we're you know we've already come off of 860 and we're into you know I think 840 is a, a fairly key support level for the simple fact that you know we have some previous swing highs right around that level and you can see you know you can see here we uh, it was resistance it came off substantially it broke through here um, it held this low on some higher volume it came through here it held uh, on this test back at the beginning of June and then you know we're right back down into that level and this is just becoming uh, a zone of contention so this is going to be what I consider a tug of war area around between 840 to 845 let's say 835 to 845 you know this is really you know this is really a key support level and I think we really need to break that in, in order to get anything going to the downside so at this point in time um, you know a break of 860 still looking good around 846 in my opinion but we really need to see uh, going into next week we're at some real inflection points um, as we just discussed in the other stock indices uh, and Google is you know sort of exhibiting that same behavior and we really need to see are we gonna hold this zone and push back up to the high side or are we gonna fail this zone and push back down into lower levels I think if we if we break this zone and we push back down into lower levels I like I like seven uh, seven hundred and sixty dollars as a potential support level um, I like um, I like that level as a you know as a potential um, you know area to retest if we look at the fib analysis just from this you know last you know swing move you're right into a 50 percent support zone you've got 822 coming in at the 618 so you know if you really break this zone then I think 760 makes sense but if we hold above 822 that would be sort of my line in the sand let me just make sure I'm drawing this clearly that would sort of be my line in the sand between um, you know long and short from a fib analysis perspective so you've got an entire zone between 824 let's say and 845 it's a twenty dollar zone of uh, potential support so this is um, I don't think this is going to be an easy ride down uh, unless you know something happens where we just you know we just uh, wake up on uh, Tuesday morning and we're off to the races um, another thing another data point is that you know you've got this um, you know this lowering momentum here and you've got this sort of divergence here where you put in a lower low in price and you put in a higher low uh, in uh, in the stochastic momentum so um, this to me is a positive divergence and you know that kind of makes me nervous looking at a short trade so you know looking at all of this stuff I would probably you know the way from the perspective that I personally trade I probably wait for another bounce and then see if we can come back down through that level that would give me more conviction that you know the um, you know you can only knock on support or resistances door so many times before it lets go so I think this would be early stage risk and then uh, looking to see you know if you can come back up fail this trend line and come back down now in terms of you know where the risk is in this trade the risk is is that you're at support and that you've got you know bottoming momentum but if you come up and you break this trend line here to the downside then I would say you know you know uh, that's probably where the stops make sense just above 880 so you know there's uh, you've got about twenty dollars twenty five dollars of risk to the high side depending on how much room you give it uh, but potentially you've got from a risk reward standpoint um, you know 860 let's say if you got in early to 760 you're looking at a hundred dollars of potential upside to you know twenty to twenty five dollars of potential risk to the downside from a short perspective so you know you're looking at a um, a four to one a three to one to a four to one trade and I think the odds uh, you know you can be wrong on a trade like this a number of times and still make money uh, the times that you're right so I think um, from a risk reward perspective um, I think it's a great it's a great potential trade so I just wanted to sort of give my thoughts on the analysis there on Google since we have some members that have actually expressed interest in that and I just wanted to you know devil's advocate um, just give my uh, my thoughts and my analysis on that I hope it helps uh, for those that are looking at that let's jump over to some of the other major markets let's look at um, let's look at the dollar index so the dollar index did end up holding that support level off of this momentum shift 
around $80.51. It held above that. And uh, we did come back up and test uh, 82.25. We didn't get, we didn't quite get up to uh, 82.50, um, but we did, you know, we we're talking about this in last week's video uh, that we thought we might hold this and push back up to the high side into around 82.50. That's, that's really the, um, um, the major magnet zone in here. You know, you can see it's, it's not a clear level. It's a zone between 82.25 and 82.50. So, you know, we're just sort of in no man's land there on the dollar index. Let's take a look at the, um, I don't know why I went back to the S&P. Let's take a look at the Euro. So the Euro came off 134.12. Uh, resistance played out there. Um, we were a little bit overdone on momentum to the high side there. And, uh, and we came off that level. Let's take a look at the USD CAD. Um, the USD CAD has been, you know, I've I've been looking for levels around 107.8. I've been looking for a test of this upper end, but you know, we've already this move has already sort of played out. It's already tested, you know, 105 half, 106. So I think that move is, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's potentially done. But you know, I still have hope that it's going to come all the way up, hold this minor trend line, and maybe push into 107.8. And then we'll we'll see from there. Uh, let's take a look at crude oil. So crude oil had an interesting move here. This isn't this isn't really what I was expecting. What I was expecting was a break of 108.80, and then it to hold that level, and then to push up to 115. Um, but having said that, you know we did break that level, and we had we had sort of a spike a spike blow off. Let me just draw a level here. See if I can get a level. We came all the way up and tested, you know, 112.21. I'm not sure if this move is done or if we're just going to find, you know, some minor footing here and see if we can push back up to the high side. So what I do is I look at the intermediate low, the intermediate high. And if you notice, I, I didn't even know this, but this is this is how crazy fibs are, right? So you've got the intermediate low, the intermediate high, and it's right into the 618. So this is really, you know, 106.68. If we hold that and push back up to the high side, um, that makes sense from a support, um, a support um, uh, perspective to see if we can get back up and test, you know, 115 ish and get through these highs. So I still have, um, um, I still am of the opinion that crude oil has the potential to go higher. Um, we'll just have to see if, you know, that's going to play out or if it's just going to drop back into this range and, you know, hold potentially a 102.22 and just, you know, go sideways. So that's the risk in these markets. We're always expecting a trend, but it's not uncommon for markets to go sideways for a long period of time. So I'm, you know, I'm cognizant of that as well at this time of the year where there isn't a lot of, you know, seasonal bias or seasonal tendencies to really drive this market uh, in any directional, um, in any directional way, for lack of a better description. So let's take a look at natural gas. Natural gas is, um, you know, it's held the 352 level. We were looking at, you know, holding 325 up to 352. Now we're above 352, and uh, I guess the next real level of resistance to the upside is going to be around um, 370. So we're between 352 and 370. That's sort of a dead zone to me. Um, you know, you're right sort of in the middle of that. You could test the low side. You could test the high side. You could just go sideways. But I think that's where um, those are where the major levels are for any um, – um, you know, for um, for what it's worth, and let's see what markets we haven't looked at. Let's take a look at um, gold. So gold came off of its highs. It broke this major downtrend line. Um, it's it's flirting with its line in the sand right around 1400. It, it got as high as um, almost 14. Uh, 1438 was a resistance level going back. It it didn't quite get through there. It pulled back. Uh, we're holding above 1380. And we closed right close to the line in the sand around 1400. So you've got a number of different, you know, ladders or zones here or, you know, levels that, you know, they're all they're all significant. And we're just sort of bouncing in between them. Um, as you as you can see, I've got a lot of levels written on this chart. Um, so I think what I'd be expecting to have happen, um, we have seasonal potential seasonal strength in the gold market until the end of October, I believe it is. So if we can hold 1380, let's say we do one of these scenarios and we can hold this and we push back up to the high side, I'm still looking at, you know, potentially 1479. Um, having said that, I wouldn't be surprised if we came all the way back down to where this trend line extends into the future and then push back off as well. So 
to me, the you know, if I wanted to get into this trade, and I'm not saying I'm going to, but if I wanted to, this would be the lower risk entry somewhere down, you know, in that zone, looking to see if it will hold, establish risk with a stop below there somewhere, and see if we can push off back to the high side. So let's take a look. That that's what makes the most sense to me from an analysis perspective. Let's look at silver. Uh, silver found major resistance just below $25 an ounce, $24.87-ish. So uh, I don't really have anything on that. I think it looks very similar to gold. Looking to see if we can um, come back down to maybe this breakout point around $21.22. See if it'll hold that and then push back off. Um, let's see. Let's look at copper. So see, copper's doing that same sort of thing where it broke out. It's coming down to its breakout point. We'll look to see, you know, momentum's coming down to the low side here. We'll look to see if momentum's going to bottom out here, hold support, and then push back off to the high side. Uh, we did, in fact, do a 50% retracement of this high um, to this low, and that's where we found resistance. You've got a minor double top happening there. Um, you've got a minor double top happening there. So you want to see like here you can, it looks like you're going to extend the range down from here of the double top when you break this sort of um, uh, apex or um, pivot point rather. Back down to the low side brings you right into support. So I'm looking to see if that support level around, I guess it's $3.18 is going to hold. And if we're going to, you know, hold that and push back off to the high side or fail. And let me just see what other markets. Let's just look at the bond market um, at US. So we did, you know, we weren't quite sure over the last couple of weeks where we were going with this, although we did have the makings of a potential momentum shift here at these lows, and we pushed right back into resistance. So if we look at, um, we're right back into resistance around, you know, just under 132. Isn't it interesting how all of these markets sort of closed at their line in the sand levels? So if you look at this, look at, we were talking about 132, um, you know, as a resistance level going back and we had to break that. We broke that. Look at where we closed. We closed right below a dollar, you know, not a dollar, right below the level of 132. All markets closed at their line in the sands. I personally would hate to be positioned going into this weekend wondering what the heck is going to happen next week. So especially, you know, with a long weekend, who the heck knows what's going to happen. So let's take a look at the 10-year. So the 10-year did the same sort of thing. It's right back into um, um, its line in the sand, right at its resistance level. Let's take a look at the um, the flip side. Let's look at the 10-year the 10-year note. So the 10-year note is right at its breakout level. Look, look at that, right above 27.45, within four cents of that. So tell me these markets aren't really indecisive, and you know they just sort of went back to their areas of liquidity or their line in the sand areas where, you know, you, you know really where you know the line in the sand or the rubber meets the road is. So um, that's all I really have this week. Um, I hope it helps. I think the main takeaway this week is that. Um, you know, to be cautious because all markets, uh, or I'm going to be cautious rather, um, you know, everyone else can do what they want, but, you know, that's just my opinion. And I think, you know, being cautious makes sense because all these markets are just right, you know, right at indecision points. They're right at inflection points. And who the heck knows what's going to happen. So hope that helps. Have a great uh, rest of long, um, uh, long weekend, Labor Day weekend. Have a great rest of weekend. And um, I wasn't able to send out any announcements yet. I'm still firming up some of the events that are coming up in September. Uh, mark your calendar for um, the second Wednesday in September. That'll be September the 11th. So that's in about 10 days' time, about a week and a half. The first CSTA meeting is taking place. I'm just waiting for the write-up to come back from our speaker so that I can post that out, and I'll send that out to all of the um, the channels that um, you know that we network with. And uh, at the end of September, there's going to be another major event in Toronto, um, with the CSTA, so stay tuned for those announcements. I'll be um, uh, involved and or around at both of those events. So I'll look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you all there. It's going to be a lot of great speakers, a lot of great education at those events. So um, stay tuned and um, hoping to get those out as soon as possible. And I'll look forward to seeing you all at the next uh, video update. All the best.